I'm Mimi L. Bernard, and this is the Perfect Life Show, Season 3, Episode 1. Alright, so the topic is can a married man or woman be friends or be best friends with uh, the opposite sex? Welcome back. My panelist is ready, and I would. Okay, I said they'll introduce themselves to you. Okay. On my right. My name is Erisi. My name is Raj. And of course, I'm Mimi L. Bernard. All right, so we are ready for the topic. Um, tonight, we want to put these views into perspectives, okay, because I believe a lot of people are, you know, whatever we are coming to say today would not make sense to someone, but then it will help someone out there. Is it okay for a married man to be friends or a married woman to be friends with the opposite sex, whether the person is also married or the person is single? Um, I'll start with you. To be just friends. Best friends, friends, it's the same. All right. Um, if you're my husband, you cannot have a, a female, female best friend. No, you cannot have a female best friend. Okay. Now, then what, what am I doing? Um, because what, then you must define that kind of friendship. All right. What, what are you finding, I mean, comforting in that friend that you cannot find in you. Well, okay, it's okay to have friends. It's okay to have female friends. I mean, in your colleagues, in the office, maybe church and all that. But what do you need an extra close um, female, female friend. friend for? Apart from your wife. Or even if you're a, a woman, why do you need, why do you a, need a male man best friend? That, you see, sometimes you create problems for our own so, selves. Yeah. Put yourself in such a situation, and at the end of the day, one thing leads to maybe that is that wasn't your initial intention. Right. But before you realize, one thing leads to another, and you are into something that you didn't intend to happen. So I do not advise it. You can have friends, but as much as possible, please try and let your partner know who your friends are. Mm -hmm. So you should have this in mind. If you cannot let your partner know your relationship or friendship with that person, then you should start suspecting yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's something that I don't agree with, first of all, because marriage is based on friendship. Okay. True friendship. Right. Which we call a best friend. Mm. So you need to marry your best friend. So if you're married to your best friend, what do you need another best friend for? More so someone who is the opposite sex. sex. It starts from there. If you are attracted to your wife or to your husband through friendship, you can equally get attracted to somebody else outside of your marriage through friendship. That is so it's something I totally do not agree with. Okay. All right. So what else? Well, um, I think that these things happen when we don't create boundaries mm. around ourselves. Personally, I know somebody, it's not a hearsay, <laughs> I know somebody personally, a man who does not give a um, lady's lift. No. If his wife is not in his car, forget it. He will not give you a ride. If he sees you, you are a lady, you are come to hug him. No, he extends. I'm telling somebody I know personally, yeah. he extends a uh -huh. handshake. You know, somebody might think that that person is an extremist. But I spoke to him and he explained why. He said he noticed a trend in his family that almost all the gentlemen in the, or almost all the men in his family, family have women outside their marriage oh, and wow. he didn't want that yeah. and he yeah. feels that if he puts certain things in place yeah. they can they can help him yeah. okay so do what works for you yeah. but make sure that you are drawing a line okay so what if you had this best friend before you even got married okay if you have, so why didn't you marry that best friend Exactly. What didn't you see in that person that you saw in the person that you got that to? So let us try to keep our minds on what attracted us to our partners yeah. in the first place. Yeah. If you didn't see that best friend worthy of marriage, well, okay, so that kind of best friend that you are still keeping, what information do you share with the yeah. person? Is okay. it information concerning your marriage? then you should be careful. Yeah, because, well, I do not buy into the idea of you losing your friends because you are You're married. married. That's another I do not buy thing, that yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. But then what I believe in is, if I am married to you, mm -hmm. then it means there is something you saw in me yeah. that is so worthy that you feel, oh, 
this is the woman I want. Yes. And if this is the woman you want, then it means there's another man also out there who will see the same yes. thing in me yeah. and would want to be yeah. with me. Yeah. So if I have a male best friend, who is a male best friend or who is your best friend? Your best friend is someone you share your secrets with someone you have fun with, someone you do a, a whole lot of things with. You even plan and the future with. with. Yeah. So I believe if I am a married woman and I have a best friend who happens to be a man, the moment I get married, I have to cut this person. Not, not cutting the person off completely, yeah. but then I should let him know where he stands. Like yeah. this is, now I am married, there is a man in my life, yeah. so like, I can't do some of the things I used to do. Yeah, I can't hang yeah. out with you like we used to. Yeah. I can't talk to you about my yeah. personal life. Yeah. Because when you get married and you have a best friend, whenever you have issues in your marriage, yeah, right. you run yeah. to this person to talk to them about whatever you are going through. Yeah. And this is what leads to their temptations. Yeah. Because you see this person as someone who wouldn't talk to you like maybe your husband or your wife talks to you because she, she or he or she might be your best friend, all right, but then you are in the same space with your husband or your wife. So your wife happens to, I wouldn't say be familiar, but then she'll yeah. be able to tell you certain things, things that, that yeah. other people cannot yeah. Yeah. tell you. So when a male or a female best friend comes in, that is when I feel like this is where the Bible says flee from temptation because you are actually going to yeah. fall into that ditch yeah and but you mentioned that if you have a best friend before you get married what do you do mm. there's something i practice personally if i get to know somebody and i realize the person is a male he's married i befriend his wife that's the bottom line so if i have a best friend who's a man and then i get married to a different man i immediately make sure this so-called best friend of mine and my husband are friends and i reduce the level of intensity Yes, Between because it has, to best be, it has to be a mutual thing. Exactly. Uh, is this person friends with both of you? Yes. Even if the person is friends, is this person best friends with your wife yeah. too? Is this person married? If he, is, if he or she is married, do you guys, if you're hanging out, do you guys hang out together as couples? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it all comes well, in. Personally, before my husband made certain things clear to me before we got married. Mm. So I had certain friends, they were not even best friends. Yeah. He told me point blank, I do not like these yeah. people. I don't like your association with them. Yeah. Yeah. And you know certain people, when you have a certain kind of relationship or level of friendship with them, a baby, you know, he told me, I don't like that. Tell that person that you have somebody in your life. He cannot call you baby. baby exactly. He cannot call you pet names. <laughs> right. Yeah, so he told me that. But there's a particular gentleman that he knows that he's comfortable with. Yeah. Because we are a group of friends and he's the only gentleman in that. And he knows all of them. And I made sure that they met. Yes, yeah. they had a conversation yeah. so that he's comfortable enough. Yeah. So that one day, if he calls me or something, he doesn't get us. You know, so bring your yeah. partner yeah. into that friendship. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. if it's just one-sided, my best friend. Yeah. Because my, my, my point is, if I am busy raising my kids, mm. busy building my family, loving my husband, my husband is loving me, we are doing all sorts of things together. together. And I get a spare time. Should I use that spare time to hang out with my friend, with my best friend, or I should use that spare time to um, build the man that I come home to, the man that comes home to me, the man that I am married to, the man that my children call oh, father. father. Yeah. Like, I mean, am I supposed to use that spare time on the other person because I feel this is my spare time. So let me go and uh, hang around this person. That, that, that's the point. A lot of people do not, they're supposed to grow up um, to a certain point when you get married. Mm. Some people don't get that when you get married, certain things must. They feel as if if you say that you are trying to say when you marry, you change. Like, no, <laughs> no, but that's not yeah. it. Marriage is, 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 is hard work and it is a um, compromise. A lot of it. A lot of compromise. So, especially 
if your partner has ever raised a concern mm. about that particular friend, mm. then please, you must now weigh, mm. my, my spiritual father told me, you must now weigh mm. on a scale which of the two relationships important. are more important to you, yeah. and then you choose. And I believe that your marriage or your husband should be of I mean, priority yeah. to the other person. And there are people who do not mind stepping on other people's toes. <laughs> the moment he gets to know, he or she yeah. gets to know, my wife or my husband is not comfortable around you. That is when they try to do things for the husband or the wife to feel insecure. What was the point? That. So my point is, why should you even bring someone into yours, someone who will bring drama? That alone is a red flag. That should yes. tell you, look, this person you are keeping as a best friend, it's not worth it. This is trouble. Have Straight trouble. Well, the Bible does not forbid um, male and female, or married men and women being uh, best friends. But then there are certain principles as a wise man or woman, you should yeah. know that this is dangerous. Yeah. Hmm. This is a trap. Best friend. Oh, my husband this did this. My wife did this. Yeah. Oh my God, sorry. Why would that woman treat you that like way? Why would that. that man do this? No, console. And then one thing leads, leads to the other. You know, most at times it happens like it just happened. I don't know how it happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It happened yeah. once yeah. and then boom, then it continues. But you it know, continues. naturally, women are drawn to men who give them a lot of attention. Mm. So if you're a married man and you keep a woman as your best friend or your close friend, now they don't use best friend, now they use close friend. Oh, I just go and watch TV in her house. Oh, I just go and watch soccer oh, in her house. Really? You go and watch TV in someone's house? I'm telling house. you, literally, that was the excuse I was given. I go and watch TV in her house. Or I just go and, you know, watch there soccer. Was no TV in her house. Oh, we had a kev TV. Okay. I mean, and that is why the unhealthy emotional attachment starts. I'm in. Exactly, because the woman is already longing for something that she's right. not getting. So if you're giving her all that attention, leaving your wife behind, oh, this is my close friend, and you're focusing so much on this strange woman or this other woman you call your best mm -hmm. friend, she will gradually grow emotions and feelings for you. That's and then true. it becomes another challenge. But the thing is, no married man or woman plans to cheat. You I've never you. seen, oh, no. I've never seen Take a married cheating. man or woman they don't say, plan to. oh, I want to cheat on my wife. No, no, no. I'm talking about somebody who was already, um, what's the name, promiscuous before they got married. Do they plan to do it? Someone might think, oh, if I marry, I'll, I think the moment I'm married, this thing will end. Will end. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, yeah. that's something we need to teach our men or our women. That yeah. look, the kind of life you live before your marriage, marriage is the is same life you are going to live. Yes. Marriage is not a cure yeah. for promiscuity. Yeah. Marriage is not a cure. Yeah. Before, what's the name? Yeah. Immorality. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm sure that even it will even heighten. Yes. It, it does increase. Married. Because now you have secured somebody's yeah. <laughs> daughter or husband in your house. Yes. So, yes. So you want to talk about something that you feel like, oh, hell? Well, um, personally, I would say that for a man, if you know you're promiscuous, you have an issue with dealing with the opposite sex, don't even step into temptation. And don't think that marriage will stop it from happening. Oh. After you marry, you might go on a break for a week or two. <laughs> a very short break. But then it will quickly pick up again. So like she was saying, marriage is not the cure to promiscuity at all. Wow. Yeah. At all. Okay, Racy, you know you have an... You've been through this, yeah. you've experienced this whole yeah. thing, yeah. my friend, my friend, and yeah. boom, yeah. you end up losing yeah. your marriage. Yeah. Well, well, what do you want to say about, say about it? it? Okay, so basically... Um, this grew over a period of two years. Oh, wow. So when it starts, initially, you don't see it. And you know, women naturally have that intuition. When we meet somebody and we don't feel comfortable around that person, or we feel this person is dangerous. So you met the person? Oh, yes, I met the person. I literally almost kind of lived around the person. Oh, okay. okay, so this person comes in oh, as a good friend. Now, my belief, like I said earlier, is that if you were a friend to my husband, you should be a friend to me. Of course. I'm not asking you to call me every day, text me every day, look for me every day. But if you have that kind of close relationship with my husband, then you should be able to see me and smile. But when you see me and frown, then it means you see me as a competition. Exactly. Or a and I don't know you from anywhere. Okay, so this person comes into our lives as a friend. Well, that's how I was told it was. There was wasn't, no, th this person didn't come through you. Not at all. Okay. Came so through your husband, your ex-husband. Yes. Yeah. So I discovered this person was around. 
and then I started asking questions like okay what is going on like I see you talking to this person a lot but I meet this person on the same compound and the person frowns and you know turns around even if I'm standing there the person is talking to you as though I'm not there oh wow yes so what is going on oh we are just friends we are just friends so we wait a while after a few weeks few months and then I state it again okay now it's getting really serious what is happening oh you can't stop me from talking to people you know and then we start using the word of God you know God says we should be nice to everybody <laughs> <laughs> God said we should be nice to everybody. So you can't, you know, be living around somebody and be arguing or fighting with the person for no reason. I said, oh, I'm not saying don't talk to this person, but you need to watch how you relate with this person because right. you may be sending very wrong signals. That is true. And then the arguments died off. Now, a few months down the line, this person, I mean, it gets so bad that this person has my bedroom keys. What? <laughs> yeah, and this person literally has my bedroom your keys. Husband's, your ex, sorry, your ex husband's friend. Friend. friend, female friend, female friend, has my bedroom keys. Oh wow! So I travel. I have not. Maybe she was doing some washing and cleaning, and I had no idea. Where were you? I had traveled to. You were out, okay. out outside. So I'm there, and I keep. I'm getting updates. Oh, today this and this happened in the house. I was told. I was told, and I was told. I'm like, oh, who is telling you? And then, oh, my, that my friend, that my friend I've been talking about. And I'm like, okay. So I come back now. I want access to my house, and oh, I've traveled. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. I took the keys. So where are the other keys? Oh, I gave it to my friend. Hmm? <laughs> oh, this friend, this friend was also living in the same house. Yes, with you. the same compound. Ah, uh, the same compound, but yes. different. Okay. Yes, different apartments. So where are my bedroom keys? Oh, sorry, I gave it to my friend. So your friend has my bedroom keys and I don't have the keys to my own bedroom. Because you're out of town. But you are not in town. <laughs> Rexy, how does your friend gain access to my bedroom keys right. when I don't have it? And it doesn't make sense. And the excuse was still, oh, my friend, my friend. Oh, my friend, my friend. Till I discovered that it wasn't just my friend, my friend. It had moved from being my friend, my friend to sharing account details, planning for the future. Yes, at the expense of your wife and your family. You had kids? One. Oh. So when you're planning for the future with someone else, when you're exchanging other things, very serious things with someone else, personal information with someone else, discussing your day-to-day -day activities with someone else. So it got to a point where even I couldn't reach him. Yes, because there's, I mean, there's no desire to even talk to your wife because now you found a best friend. So that's how it grew to the point where there was no return. So that's how come you broke <laughs> you divorced with very flimsy excuses. You didn't fight for your husband? You didn't fight for I, your marriage? I fought to a point. <laughs> you got tired? I, I, I didn't get tired. I just fought to a point where I almost lost my mind and almost lost my life. That's why I started the Strong Woman Initiative for other women. So what is the Strong Woman Initiative about? Okay, so the Strong Woman Initiative was set up in January. We launched it January 2019. And basically we create a platform where women have access to professional counselors 24 seven, like any time of the day. You don't need to see them face to face. You can send them a WhatsApp. You can send them a message on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere, call them on phone, and they'll talk to you at any point in time. Now, the reason why I set this up was in the course of fighting for my marriage, I got to a point where I was losing it, literally. There was one particular day I almost lost it, if not for my family that rushed in because my mom called them. I'm sure I would be like obituary by now. Mm -hmm. Yes, like it was really you bad. You to kill yourself? Oh, so many times. Mm -hmm. So many times. The voices will tell you, you know what, you've, this is too much of a disgrace for you. You can't handle this. This is too much. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking, who will take care of my daughter? Right. And then immediately, that same voice will say, oh, your mother is there. Forget about it. Kill yourself. End it. Mm -hmm. And so if I didn't have family at that, and they made sure I was never alone. So I'm just thinking of somebody out there who is living alone, doesn't have her family. There are people who even have people around, but then they, they are not comfortable talking, talking about it. So they end up keeping everything alone. Yeah. Home. Yeah. I had a friend like that. Initially, initially when my issue happened, I just I felt like I was alone and I was the only one going through this. Mm. I didn't know there were other people. Till a few months down the line, a friend of ours we grew up with died out of this same issue. She lost her mind and then she lost her life. And that was when I realized, okay, people out there need help. 
So when did you, did someone ask you to see a psychologist or you just decided to see one? Um, it was my family basically. They counseled me through it. You didn't my see pastor, a my I did. I'm still actually talking to. I'm, I I tell people I make use of the, the psychologists I have and the counselors I have. I call them at any point in time because once in a while when you're sitting there, I mean it, it comes oh, back. Yeah. You remember? Oh, this so actually. So you married now? I, I don't know anything about it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we are not friends. I mean, so I don't. But you have a child. Can I ask you? Yeah. So you are talking about family, and would you say or do you think it's possible that? And um, maybe your close relationship with your family could have caused anything. Do you think that maybe your family interfered? Interfered. Okay, so basically my family we are we are really close, but they know how to stay away. Okay. My mom will always tell you, she won't even pick up her bag and say, I'm going to visit my daughter because my dad will ask her, Why? Is it your marriage? So everybody stayed away. So they got to a point where they realized okay, it was becoming abusive. I was being abused emotionally, mentally. I was going off. But not physically. But not physically. I was gradually going. They realized, okay, if they don't step in, they'll lose me. That was when my family stepped in. So at no point in time did they interfere. They knew what was going on, but they wouldn't even show up because Wait, of so reasons like that. During the time that you were going through all these things, was there a time that you felt there was hope? You felt, okay, you know sometimes it's on and off. You feel like, oh, I'm done with this. And then this person will show up and then make it look as if, oh, I'm ready to work this out. And then boom, another thing comes up. I went through that phase for two years. The hopeful phase, yeah. The hopeful phase for two years. Okay, I discovered this. That's why I was saying that marriage doesn't end promiscuity. Whoever and whatever you are, before marriage, that is what you are after marriage. Saying I do will not snap that spirit of womanizing out of you. So if that is what you are before you marry, that's where you'll be after. So after marriage, I made a discovery and then I stayed through. So you didn't see all these things during your marriage? That's the funny thing, not a hint. And I keep telling people that if I didn't see anything, how come nobody around me saw anything to even warn me about? Maybe you didn't give people the opportunity to. I actually did. Like, I actually went seeking for information for a year and a half. Before you accepted? Yeah. Tried finding out. Like, hey, who is this person? Hey, do you know this person? Okay, so no info. at that point, at that time, would you have taken him back if he had come back to say, okay, I messed up, I'm sorry, I, I want you back? Would you have forgiven him? Maybe at that time, yes. No? No. <laughs> no, no. no way, no way. Now it's gone beyond the. I mean, I've forgiven and I've let it go. Because I forgave, that's why God has been able to establish this thing through me. And I do it peacefully. I don't get affected by the stories I hear from people. That's how I know I've healed. I've forgiven and I've let stuff. Oh, a lot of stuff. The people who come and use the TSW platforms initially talk to me. It's very confidential. So their details, their names, numbers, doesn't go to anybody, it comes straight to me. So whenever they message us on Facebook, WhatsApp, it comes directly to me. So I speak with all of them, and some of them tell me the issues before they speak to the counselor. Some of it... Okay, so did you have a lot of people in, the, in your house, like, in the compound? Was it just you? Was it just two apartments, or there were other people? No, it wasn't, it wasn't like an open compound house. It was actually a two-bedroom, self-contained, self-contained, and then the third one. That was where the best friend lived. So there was another person also yes. in the house? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Raj, any question? Hmm. Well, are you crying? Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, but I'm, I'm quite, I don't know, yeah. emotional. But um, I wanted to also ask whether you didn't get a hint during yeah. Your caution and yeah. Yeah. yeah, not a hint. And I keep saying that even if I no, did, would you have even changed your mind if someone had come to say that? Okay, I know this dude. He's like this, this like and like that. that. One person actually did, but that person also wanted to marry me, so I didn't believe him. Oh, oh. A, a guy. Yes, he wanted to marry you. Yes. Okay. So it makes it. So you thought maybe he, wa he, he wanted jealous. you. Yes. I don't know if I can bring this up, but. Um, he spoke about the prophecy that came yeah, 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 before yeah. you married. 
Yeah. Okay, what was the prophecy? Okay, so basically the main reason why I took that decision to say I do, to a, somebody I would say was a total stranger as at that time, even after a year and a half, was because... You still saw him as a stranger? Yeah. After a year and a half? After a year and why? a half. Why? My sister and I were praying, actually. That's when we received the prophecy. Because I didn't have peace with them. And you still went in praying? I still went in because... You were in After love. the prophecy. What was the prophecy? The prophecy was... Okay, so we, my sister and I have been prophesied to, and then I'm told by the man of God, I have seen somebody, wait, God gave me the person's name. And then his name is mentioned in full. And he's sitting there at the meeting. So he's called out, and then the prophet says, wow, I see your wedding day, so glorious. And it was a glorious day. I remember that. Yes. So I see your wedding, is so glorious. Oh, wow. He talks about the wedding, the marriage. Oh, this is good. God is going to use you to do this. Yeah, 2015. Yeah. You got married in 2015. 2015. So God is going to do this and that and this through you. So that was it for us. Because we, we had been, I told my parents, my siblings, I'm not, I'm not sure. There's something about this thing that I can't put my so hand on. So you were just on. waiting for, waiting for a, a sign. Yes. And the prophecy. Whoa. So my issue is actually a bit different from the everyday woman. You see the red flags and you still say, oh, he'll change after a while. I saw nothing. I, I just, there was just something in me that said, this is not right. There's, there's something, you know, about him. Sometimes, and then the prophecy I think that was discernment. Yes, but then you didn't take it really. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. So women out there, if you receive a prophecy, it doesn't mean you should run and leave your new boyfriend or your old boyfriend and go and marry a new. Or were you in a relationship by then with someone? No, I wasn't. Seeing okay, you were still. Yeah, okay. I wasn't seeing anyone at that time. And a lot of this. A lot of them. So how do you feel now? Um, initially, I felt like. But you're still, you're beautiful. Thank you. You're very beautiful. Thank you. Initially, I was a bit worried because at this age, um, having the title of a divorcee, having a child. Mm -hmm. But what I see is, I see a woman who has used whatever she's been through to help other women. Yeah. And you have no idea what you are doing for her. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. helping a lot of people yeah. because yeah. there are people who do not even know whom to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes people come to you, they talk to you, you're a woman, I'm a woman of God, yeah. they come, they talk to me, I'm like, God, this woman is going through hell, am I, I can't tell her to go back there, yeah. Yeah. I can, I can pray for her, I, I, okay, yeah. so I should tell her to pray for God to change the man, like for instance, a man beating his wife, no, oh. no, you cannot oh, stay there, no. you cannot stay there. So we will not advise you to divorce, yeah. but we will say that go away before you die. Safety first. Safety okay, first. so a man is beating his wife and you don't advise the woman to divorce. divorce them. No, not no, at all. Separate. Divorce and separation yeah. are, are different. Corner, two different things. Find somewhere to yeah. stay yeah. for safety. Yeah. Then maybe that man should go through psychology exactly. or counseling or whatever it is yeah. till his Sanity is stable. We are sure that he's fine. Yeah. That's the truth. <laughs> no, seriously. Because, yeah. because it is very like yeah. her friend, yeah. she lost her life. Yeah. Had she known? Yeah. And, and I, I was telling her backstage that I was thinking about it today and I mm. said that we really judge people wrongly. Mm. Or because I was thinking about it today and I said, am I sure that if I was in an abusive marriage, I would, like, I would just have left? No, no, it will be hard. Yeah. You will keep convincing yourself, oh, everything will get better. Will, yeah. you, will be, you will change. Yeah. Oh, let me yeah. pray about yeah. it. But the, the funny part is people see emotional abuse as better than physical abuse. It's emotional but emotion abuse. It's worse. It's worse. It's worse. Depression is worse. So many women are coming to us who are depressed. And I always, people think I'm a marriage counselor. I'm not a marriage counselor. <laughs> I don't even give advice on marriage and relationships. But basically, my concern now is every woman should be in their right mental state yes. to make their own decisions. Mm. As for the men, the Lord shall deliver them. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> because. You, you've never seen a woman abusing a, a man emotionally Ooh. before. No, it happens. Yeah. But just that men do not talk. talk. Yeah, at all. A man might be going through something and he'll not even, even cry for you to yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. That's true. 
I was dealing with an issue yesterday. I was dealing with an issue yesterday, and the man happened to have found out that um, the wife was making a WhatsApp video call while she was bathing to him. She, she plays the call through to a man. Oh, Lord. And she was like naked, and then she plays the call through, and the man was listening to everything oh. by the door, and then he entered and was like, really, is this what you're doing? Oh. And so the lady came to talk to me, and after the lady spoke with me, the, I, I confronted the man. The lady didn't talk about everything. She just spoke about the fact that her husband has taken the phone, this, this, this. I was like, so I, was, I asked the man, what's really going on? And then he gave me his part of the story, and then he sent me screenshots of some conversations and call history to a particular, I was like, and the fact that the man even had to call the guy to threaten, I was like, oh, so guys also he can do that. that. I've never seen that before. The guy actually calls the, the yeah. husband called the other guy and yeah. one well, was like, he was like, you are a married man. Why are you entertaining another married that. woman? I was surprised. Oh, men get more jealous than, than women. women. But they don't show it. Don't no. show it. Okay, so did it affect your Christian life? Um, to an extent. Initially, I started asking God questions. Did you go back to the prophet that gave you that prophecy? I went straight back to him. And like what did know. he say? Well, he confirmed it again, and then he told me what was to come. And what was he? He said you were going to get married? No. <laughs> okay, let's keep that a secret. <laughs> we talk behind the yes. scene. Yeah. Wow. So, so you, stopped, you stopped going to church? Well, initially I started asking God questions. And every time I went to church, I was crying in church because oh, no. I don't just go to church and sit, you know, and warm the chairs. I'm always on stage, always leading a song or leading praise and worship. So I'm standing there leading praise and worship or ministering, and I'm weeping, and people don't understand why. Uh, yes, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was, me. <laughs> it was me asking God, God, why? Why? Of all the people in the I world, know. why me? Because. Everybody who has known me from the time I was young know the kind of family I'm coming from. All we do is church. All we do is God. All we do is ministry. So for somebody like me to go through something like this, it didn't make sense initially until I started this project and I realized, okay, this is what God wants. Because now when I'm talking to people and I tell, they tell me something and I go like, yes, I understand. They go like, yes, we know you understand. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they pay attention when I'm speaking to them or when I'm telling them what to do. Did it affect your work? I mean, and when you get to the office, like, you before were banker, I wasn't, right? Yes, before I wasn't even working. So I started working after. That was in October 2017. So every time I closed from work, between work and my brother's house, because I had to live with him for over a year before I moved out, every time I closed from work and I'm coming home, I weep, mm -hmm. literally from the office till I get to the gate, and then I wipe my eyes and then go in. Mm -hmm. It was that bad. I couldn't afford to be alone. So, yeah. wow. <laughs> One thing I know is when you get into some of these things, when some of these things happens to you, you sometimes start some habitual, certain things that, you know, you feel like, okay, so let me get stuck on this, and I feel yeah. like maybe this thing will release the tension. Yeah. This will make me feel better. Yeah. This will make me forget about the pain. Yeah. Like, what, what, what did you do? Um, so I started drinking. Something I wasn't doing before. Hmm. Started drinking like a lot. And then there was this time, I just called a friend of mine, he's taking me to the club. So I went to the club for the first time. And I was lost in there, so I didn't go back there again. <laughs> so for me, basically, he was drinking, trying really hard to party. I wasn't going well because I wasn't fitting in. I didn't even have the right clothes to wear. So I go there and I'm like all dressed up and flat showing things. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so talk about your company. I know you, you got your company through this whole yeah. issue. Yeah. Your, is that an NGO or something? Yes, the Strong Woman is an NGO. So we provide 24-7 counseling for women. We have professional counselors we've partnered with. Okay. So it's, I'm not the one doing the counseling. Some women prefer to talk to me, though. Mm. But I still go ahead and give them counselors. So you can reach us on WhatsApp. The number is zero. Is it for free? Oh, yes, yeah, free. You have free counseling at any time of the day. It's free. 
That's the good part about it. Choose the number. Yes, yeah, so you can reach us on WhatsApp. The number is 0548 0080080. Please repeat it. Okay. So 0548 0080080. So you can't call, it's just on WhatsApp. Oh, you can call me. Some people call me. Okay. So you can call, you can send a WhatsApp, you can go on Instagram and look for at the strong woman underscore GH or okay. on Facebook, the strong woman. So you can send me a message on Facebook, on Instagram, and it's not going to anybody, it's coming directly to me. So it's highly confidential. Wow. We don't discuss your issues with it, anybody. The counselors don't even tell me the issues, so you tell me yourself. They just give me a progress report, oh, this person is doing okay. So your data, everything is with me, like it's all in my head. I don't discuss with anyone. Wow. Wow. Well, is there anything you'd want to something <laughs> short something just to encourage someone out there who is also going through that through something similar I always yeah. tell um, women that once you have life there's always hope there's always a better way of handling things don't be dramatic don't be too emotional it's okay to feel hurt and pain and all that but channel it out through the right process do something good with how you're feeling let's make sure that mentally you are stable you are okay financially you are independent you are strong enough to take your own decision so you don't come to us and we tell you leave your husband or go and beat this person go and fight with that person no, we don't give you solutions to your problems our issue is that you are doing fine and you are healing so make sure that whatever you're feeling you're channeling it through the right process and i mean it will pass it's just a face Mind pass. Wow. Thank you, Raj. <laughs> yes. Um, well, so right now, do you feel like, oh, I don't ever want to get married again? <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. No. I, I mean, I will get married again. Are you dating? No, I'm not dating. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I'm waiting for You're Mr. Wright. Where are you? <laughs> Mr. Wright, he's waiting for yes, you. Yes, we're waiting. Okay. Uh, right, what would you want to add to the um, female, uh, married man, married woman, friend, being friends with the... Um, well, what I'll say is that let's be very careful. And, uh, you know, sometimes when, when we are, in quotes, caught in such situations, mm -hmm. we try to justify and all that. Let's not do that. Once you do that, you are giving yourself a reason to move out. So please, let us be very... You see, this thing can be very tricky. You will feel that it's okay. You feel... Nobody is asking you to drop your friends. Yeah. But there's a certain level of communication that should not go on mm -hmm. whilst once you are married. Whether it is um, on, on WhatsApp or call or... Person, or whatever, there's a certain level, and you know that you know that kind of <laughs> communication. So please let not just don't, don't put yourself in such a situation. Mm -hmm. It is wrong, it is a sin. Yeah. Because I have read recently at several places that cheating is not only about intimacy, mm -hmm. it goes beyond mm -hmm. that. It is about emotional. You yeah. can cheat on your yeah. spouse emotionally, emotionally. Yeah. and all that. Yeah. So if you feel that all your love or all your attention now is going to another person, yeah. why don't you channel that? If you feel that there's something wrong with your spouse or your spouse is not doing something right, let's try and talk it out with your partner or try and see what can be done about it other than bringing a third party to complicate things. So yeah. that's yeah. what I have. For you. Thank you. Okay, so... The Bible, just like I said from the beginning, the, the Bible does not forbid anyone from being friends with the opposite sex, but and lead us not into temptation. Do not be led into it. The Lord will not lead you into temptation, but then you would eventually lead yourself into temptation. No one is saying don't be friends with the opposite sex, but then would you be comfortable if your husband or your wife is also close friends with the opposite sex. Yeah. If you are not comfortable with it, then don't do it. That is what I will say to you. Thank you for watching us. I hope we blessed you. All right, so let's get interactive on Facebook at Mimi Elvin at Nelson Shen, on Instagram at The Prophet's Wife Show, and on YouTube, The Prophet's Wife Show with Mimi Elvin at Nelson Shen. So you can send us your stories and the topics you want us to discuss, and then we will bring it up for discussion. 
All right, so before we leave, we want to say thank you to Prophet Bernard L. Bernard Nelson and Shen for being the executive producer for this show. And let me invite you to church on Sunday. All right, so we're meeting at Adventa SDA, Spirit Life Revival Ministries, the Oracle's Place. You can call 234 077 077788 